Hey y'all. Hey y'all. What's up? This is El Presidente. Oh, this is yep. your boy, Gospel Icon, my Harold Peoples Jr. What's going on, y'all? My name is Jimmy. This lady, also known as Leah. And you're now watching. And you're listening to Speaking Plain English. And the Speaking Plain English, which are. With your host Roberta on. Your beautiful With my homegirl Roberta on Praise dot FM. On Praise FM. On Praise FM. Hello, happy Saturday, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Speaking Plain English. I am your host, Roberta, and as you can see, I am somewhat in transit. I am, you know, I'm parked, so we're good <laughs> for now, um, but we are going to, um, we're going to have a great show today. Um, I'm going to, of course, I'm going to introduce my guest, but before I do that, what I would like for everyone to do, all the media stuff. You know, I leave you to do the liking and the sharing and the subscribing. If you're on YouTube, um, hit the notification bell so that you are always alert and aware of when we are about to show, you know, we're about to air, we're about to come on. Um, let's see, what other announcements do I have? I don't have um, um, to memory any Earth Entry anniversaries that for this week, but if anybody's here that is celebrating an Earth Entry anniversary or want to shout somebody out that is feel free to put that in the comments. Um, also, just in case, you know, you guys don't um, forget or just be by way of announcement because I make sure that I let you know um, if there anybody is a Black author, Black artist, or Black business owner and um, you would like to either have an ad placed on the show or have a product, um, a book, or some music or anything like that that you would like to have promoted, um, feel free to let us know or let me know so that I can be able to, you know, get your ad together um, or even make you a guest on the show, whichever you would like. All right. Um, I'm trying to think, is there anything else before we get into? Oh, no, I was going to say something else, but I can't yet. There's, there's some, all I'm going to say is that there's something very exciting that is coming up um, soon. It's not 100% complete, complete yet. Um, but it's in the works. There's a few things actually in the works, but this one particular thing I thought we would be ready for today, but it's not. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to, once it's all ready, hopefully, hopefully by um, next week, we'll have it all ready and we'll have it all together. So just stay tuned for, um, a very, very exciting announcement. I'll just put it like that. It's a first for me. So I'll leave that as the clue. Um, all right. So that's that. So our guest for today, as you saw that we are going to be talking about the creative writing process um, or the process of, you know, of creative, of creative writing. I'm just going to say um, that she is actually, she is a returning guest. She has been here before and um, she is an author of 14 books, 14, and she's got some bestsellers on there. Um, listen, if you hear stuff in the background, that's because like I said, we're live and I'm outside. It's nice out. Isn't it beautiful outside, finally? Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful, beautiful day. Um, so, yes, I am not going to tell you where I'm going because it's actually a surprise from my babies who are here with me. And if I tell y'all, that means they're going to know and they can't know. So, <laughs> all right, guys. So, what I'm going to do is I am going to bring to the stage our guest for today, Linda Johnson. Hey, everybody say hello. Hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I am so glad to be able to have you back. Thank and you. I Hopefully, I'm not delayed. I'm not sure. Let me know if there's a delay, because there might be, because I don't know. There just might be. But anyway, 
Um, you guys, I want those, especially those who are, you know, creative writers. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't even do the welcoming. My fault, my fault, y'all. So I want to welcome Facebook. I want to welcome Praise FM. I want to welcome YouTube. Um, I want to welcome, well, I would say Instagram, but I'm not on Instagram today because I can't do Instagram on my phone, apparently. At least not yet. StreamYard is going to get that together. So, and also welcome all of the guests that are here otherwise, you know. All right, so Linda, before we get started with our questions, I just want, um, I gave you, I gave them a little bit, just a very teachy bit about you. So I want you to just give us a little bit about you. Yes. <clears throat> My name is Linda Johnson and I have over uh, 30 years of professional executive, um, you know, administrative experience. I've retired from that portion of my life and now I've, uh, I've decided to take a step of faith and I am a full-time freelance writer, creative writer. I'm also an avid journal writer. So I'm going to talk to you all as I'm talking with uh, Roberta today about my creative process um, and how it ties in with the journaling uh, process that I do believe that could add a lot of value in the lives of other people. I also, I help women who are held hostage to past trauma from uh, sexual abuse, uh, from, from any kind of, um, any kind of abuse that they've experienced, whether it's battery, uh, sexual harassment, childhood sexual abuse, molestation, and so forth. Um, I um, have, I earned my MFA in creative writing in May of 2019. And my very first book that I published was entitled Positive Thinking Will Make You Happy that hit Amazon's best-selling author list. Yes. Immediately following that, yes, immediate, immediately following that book, I published uh, my, uh, my personal story entitled Violated Victim, Validated Victor, Breaking My Hush. And that was the story I was always afraid to tell. And that book became my number one best-selling author book. So I am also a writing coach. Um, I have a soon-to-be writing course that I will be introducing to the world. So for those who are following me on social media, you'll be able to uh, get that information very, very soon. Um, I, As Roberta mentioned, that I do have 14 books um, that are published. You can get them on um, mostly on Amazon, but I do have some of my books on Barnes & Noble, uh, on Goodreads on eBay and so forth, all of the download stores. Um, and my latest book um, is entitled, Let Me Show You How to Write a Book. I don't know if you can see this, yes. but let me show you how to write a book. Yeah, is basically uh, what really led me to start coaching and sharing my creative process. And this particular book um, that's also available on Amazon, it aids as a tool and a guide to help the creative writer be become the best writer themselves and to get the writing process started. And that's me. Awesome. Awesome. One thing that she didn't do that I just discovered about her um, within the past couple of days is if you're somebody who needs to kind of, um, you know, like kind of organize your day and things like that, she actually will help you with that as well. Um, like break down, you know, like yeah. she'll take your full day and she'll give you, you know, put time slots and then put something together for you. So anybody who needs a little bit of organization um, or you have so much that you got going on and so many things that you want to get done within a day and you start this and then stop and start this and then stop. You know what I mean? She'll help you with that. And give you like a schedule so that you're yes. able to make good use of your time. So, yes, that's just something else. Hey, Dr. Lady Rain. Um, that's something else that she you know, she didn't say, it, but I'm going to add that in there as well. So anybody who needs that. Thank you. Actually... Thank you, Roberta. And, you know, um, to that point, um, leverage, helping people to leverage their day is something that I've been doing all of my career in corporate America. So now I'm doing it and working for myself as an entrepreneur. So, you know, I'm just thankful for anyone who might be interested. Listen, that is what I do. That's a part of what I do. Thank you so much, Roberta. I'm not sure if we're frozen or not, but if we are, I'll just keep talking until uh, Roberta is back on. 
Um, so um, today, Roberta will be talking to me about the creative process. And um, <clears throat> I'm going to, I want to give you all the breakdown, uh, starting with what it is that I do. I want to wait until Roberta comes back on. I think she's probably having a connection problem because we had had that problem before. But I also, um, I'm on Clubhouse. For those of you who are joining us uh, this afternoon, um, if you're on Clubhouse, check out the Writing Palace, which is a, a club that I created as well as the, uh, the Journaling Life. And I come on Clubhouse and I do silent journal writing rooms and we do writing sprints and writing prompts together. Uh, we also, I have a room that I started called Speak Up and Speak Out. And we come on Speak Up and Speak Out and we talk about issues that people would otherwise not be comfortable uh, sharing. And that was a platform that I created as a result of writing my, uh, my book, Violated Victim Validated Victor. So yeah. Um, if you're on Clubhouse, I think it's a great uh, platform um, for anyone who just want to really uh, collaborate and connect with people, like-minded people, whatever it is that you do. And I'm going to tell you, there is no topic that is off limits on Clubhouse, none whatsoever. Um, I, um, I'm thankful for uh, my coach, uh, Monique Liso, who her and <clears throat> her husband, Delano A. Johnson, who is the author of Refuse to Be Talented and Broke. They started the House of Creativity. And that's how I um, became a part of Clubhouse. And because of the, uh, the House of Creativity, you know, basically they've helped so many people to build their brands. And, uh, you know, my coach, Monique Lisa, I, I just thank God for her because because of her, uh, although I have uh, published 14 books, okay, uh... I've actually written 25 books. Anyway, Roberta's back. My apologies. My phone just decided to shut down because apparently it was overheated. Okay. I have never had, first of all, I just want to say I've never had this problem with Samsung. I've never had this problem no. with iPhones. I'll be with um, Androids. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. So what, what, go ahead and we went to what you were, um, what you were explaining. Yeah. I was just talking about, you know, Clubhouse and how, you know, um, becoming a member of Clubhouse, thankfully through my writing coach, Monique Lisa, and um, her husband, Delano A. Johnson, who started, they're the visionaries of the House of Creativity. That's how I was able to get involved. And uh, I started to just really join Clubhouse and join the rooms. And really, I was sitting on the porch. Then I, <clears throat> I began to take a seat in the room. And then I started, you know, coming on a stage. And then I began to talk with people, professional people. I'm talking about like uh, CEOs and millionaires and billionaires, people who I can ask questions, people who can give me good information people who can help to push your product. Yes. So um, it was a really, really great place to get started. And as a result, here I am today, 14 books later published, and I've written over 25. So, and I help authors, other writers to tell their stories. That's, and that's, and that's, I'm glad that you were able to do that. Thank you, first of all, for continuing on. <laughs> Thank you. But um, <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> that's, that's great information for, um, for those who, because, I honestly, I still have yet to join Clubhouse. I've heard that, you know, for a while ago. So that's, I never knew that Clubhouse was still a thing. So it's yeah. good that you were actually able to, not not just that you were able to, but that you decided to, you know, come out of your comfort zone and out of, no, I can't say your comfort zone because you, I mean, you you do public speaking. Um, but <laughs> come out of like, you know, instead of just sitting and decided to let everybody else, you, you know, you decided to, you know, to use your voice and to say something and that actually yes. started you with everything else. And that actually is very, very inspiring because that's, um, that's something that, um, I'm learning to do is to come out Thank you, and Roberta. actually, yes. you know, take that step regardless of yes what you know what how fearful it is. And I've, I've been doing, I've been doing that honestly, this show in itself yeah. is a step. So, yeah, I mean, even though we are, well, before we're into four, June will be four years. June will be four years of speaking plain wow. English. And so, I, it's, so, it's so interesting on how, you know, just the story, the way that everything started. And because this is not even something that I really, really am comfortable doing. But apparently, it's been a blessing to those who have been here, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> Dr. Ray, yes. you know how the devil does always. You're, do, you're doing a good job. You're doing a great Thank job. You. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. 
All right, so let's get you started. So, well, continue. Let me ask you what, so what kind of, um, I'm not sure what you went to do before, but what kind of writer are you? And what exactly um, was it that inspired you to start writing? Okay, so I am a creative writer um, by craft and by credentials. That's what I earned my uh, master's degree in. Um, and what really, really uh, started me to writing is when I was younger, when I was a child, I used to write in a diary. And, um, you know, a diary is something that's that's considered a private thing. A diary is something that you have a lock and a key. And God forbid, if something should happen to you, I believe that your diary should go with you to the grave. Whereas mm -hmm. a journal is something that I think it should be okay to share your journals. I mean, I have all kinds of guided journals that I provided uh, for writers as well. So I started journaling. That's how it all started. Now, let me just say, journal writing is not creative writing, but I do believe that journal writing will help to give you immediate creative writing ideas. Um, even t keeping a dream journal. Roberta, you know, I actually mm -hmm. read some of my dream journals to Roberta just to yep. kind of give her an inside look into my life. We went back a couple of years ago, back I think 2020, four years ago. And I was, I was cracking up. <laughs> yeah, I was <laughs> yeah. cracking up just reading some of the dreams that I had. And you know, some of those, uh, those dreams inspires my creativity. So let me just tell you, I believe that we all have a story. You have a story and I have a story or someone that you know has a story, but I'm a strong believer that the story that you really need to write is the one you've always been afraid to tell. Mm -hmm. And the story that I was always afraid to tell became my number one best-selling author book. Wow. So yeah, um, I, I was inspired uh, by uh, people telling me when I shared my testimony, you know, you should write a book. You know, uh, I think what really, really, really pushed me the most is when I was in a place in my life going through, I want to say one of the uh, greatest hardships, I found myself on a pantry line and a lady said to me, I was giving out these bookmarks, right? Uh, bookmarks that I made. These are what I call my bootleg bookmarks, not the real bookmarks. <laughs> and I, on the bookmarks, they have written positive thinking. Positive thinking will make you happy. I'll show you guys the actual book. But I actually made these bookmarks. I should have brought some with me to show you guys. And I started giving them out on the pantry line. And I met someone. She shared her story with me of how she got to the pantry line. And I shared my story with her of how I got to the pantry line. And after I shared my story, she said, oh, my goodness. She said, you know, you would really benefit by telling your story to other people. So I did write that story. I just never published it, mm. you know, about I called it the pantry line. And that kind of is what really got me to thinking that, you know, I need to tell my real story, the one I was afraid to tell. So I entered into, I, I wrote a letter and I, um, you know, basically I, I wrote it to the College of New Rochelle where I earned my bachelor's degree and they chose me to be in the creative writing uh, program. And that's how it all started. And then when you start writing with like-minded people, and I'm saying these are the most amazing professors and the most amazing creative writers. And I was uh, writing at the Langston Hughes house and, you know, just going um, different places. And you, I thought I was the worst writer of them all. They love me, but I love them more. Let me just say mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Wow. That's some, that's something. Cause um, that goes with, um, I guess with music as well, you know, whenever you, any type of writing at all, yeah. you know, it's a lot of times yeah. it, um, it comes from your own personal journey and the difference. I don't, that's what I do remember you mentioning last time that there is a difference between a diary and a journal. I like that. I like that. Um, yeah. with your diary, that's your, you know, your most deepest thoughts and to have that, I think that's, a, yeah. that's, that's not a bad idea that whenever you, um, cause sometimes there's just certain things that you just have to get out, you know, certain things. And I remember when I was yeah. younger, um, I used to have a diary. I, I mean, it wasn't locked or anything like that, but I used, that was always something that I've always yeah. you know, loved to do was just to write. Matter of fact, I remember when I was, I forgot what was it college or was it a high school? We had to write, um, it was a creative writing class and okay. we had to, um, 
we had an assignment to write about anything, you know, just about anything, just a little story. And I ended up pretty much almost yeah. writing a whole <laughs> novel in, in a nutshell. I mean, it was a lot oh, and wow. I didn't, because I'm very detailed. I'm very detailed when I write. So yes. like when you were talking about, yeah. um, you know, like the, the dream journals, I see when I dream, yeah. not necessarily when I dream, because we all dream daily, I mean, nightly. Yeah. But there yeah. are some, you know, that I remember. But when I remember them, I really, really remember them vividly. And um, that's what I started yes. doing, especially when they, you know, like if I have a, a specific theme that's, um, you know, that's recurring, I'll write them down yeah. in such detail. And I don't know, like I'm thinking I'm like, I may not use that for any stories or anything like that, but it's good to yeah. be able to have that record. You know what I mean? It's good to yeah. be able to have um, yeah. a record of the thoughts and things that you've had. And again, like you said, use them to um, inspire your, you know, your creative writing. So that was cool. Yes. So let me and you ask know, you. Go ahead. You know, the amazing thing about that, when you use those ideas um, to tell your stories, some people put those things on the shelves and they don't think that they're valuable. But sometimes it's not until years later when you pull it off the shelf and you read through it, it's like, oh my God. I could have made a movie out of this. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So who would you say would be your um, your favorite authors? Toni Morrison. I would say she would probably be uh, number one. I love uh, Virginia Woolf. I like Carson Whitehead, um, Alexander Chi. Uh, there, there are so many. But I, I'd say uh, they're some of my favorite as a child. My childhood, my favorite childhood author was Judy Bloom. Do you remember Judy Bloom? Yes, I do. <laughs> Are yes, you I do. And, me, Margaret? and listen, and the they mysteries. made it into yes. a movie, and I didn't. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to see it. And then I, I also, um, you know, I like, you know, there, there are some. Um, I want to say they're probably not well-known authors, but I've met authors through being a part of an organization through one of my uh, mentors named Dr. Teneria Drummond Smith. Mm -hmm. And I'm a part of this organization called the Awesome Women on the Move. And let me tell you, these are some awesome writers as well. Um, uh, Sophia Green is one of those authors. Dr. Teneria Drummond Smith, and also um, the the person who published my first book, Jermaine um, Summers Miller. She has a book out right now. It, it's about how to write your book in 90 days. But I would say they really, really pushed me to the limit. Some people, they bring out the best in you because they pushed you beyond that which you think you can uh, get to to achieve something great. So yeah, I met so many amazing authors, uh, Reverend Dr. Benjamin Chavis Jr. Muhammad, who endorsed my first book, Positive Thinking Will Make You Happy, excellent writer, uh, Sister Soldier. Her, her real name is Lisa Williamson. I used to work with her, but she's also an amazing writer, an amazing author. So I have so many, but I, if I could just say number one, it would be Toni Morrison, Charlotte Bronte. You know, I love the Bronte uh, sisters. I love all of them, uh, Anne, Emily, and Charlotte. And Jane Eyre happens to be one of my favorite, you know, books. Uh, mm -hmm. I love British li literature. Yeah. Awesome. So really quickly, we're going to go into um, just a really quick commercial, and then we will be right back very shortly. Sure. This is the gold mic there by Love. Let's go. Ah. Sorry, sorry. I love the cheese. I worship and adore you. Ready and I'm with Yeah. Come over here. I'm here. You. Ah. <laughs> Everybody went out my Are you interested in continuing your education certificate or degree that will prepare you in the ministry and equip you in the marketplace? Come make Christ Central University your home. Visit us at www.myccu.online. All right, all right, and we are back. If you are just tuning in, welcome again to another episode of Speaking Plain English. And we are here talking about the process of creative writing with our guest author, best-selling author on top of that, um, Linda Johnson. So Linda was just talking to us a bit about, um, you know, the process of 
you know, how you can take your journal, you know, like your diary and your journals and just, you know, jotting down things and how you can actually use those to um, make, you know, creative, you know, to write on your, you know, to make your own works, whether they can be going into movies, yes. um, you know, taking your experiences in a nutshell, in any way. And um, yes. she was also telling us about her, all her favorite authors. So what I'm going to ask you is to like, kind of walk us through a bit of your process when it comes to your writing. Yes. Yeah, so um, I'm going to I'm going to do this as though I was coaching you, Roberta. Um, okay. The first thing that, you know, I do is we start with brainstorming. You know, I have a brainstorming technique and, you know, ba brainstorming basically consists of number one uh, words. And I have a mind dumping exercise. And what we do is um, any topic you can think of, give yourself one minute or if it's something that relates to your personal story, we call this, I call this exercise mind dumping. And basically what we do is whatever word comes to your head, just write it down, write it on the page, write it on your tablet, write it on your phone, write it in your notes. Even if you're speaking, speak every single word. I tell people, if you don't know where to get started in the writing process, just start with one word. Every day for a week or for two weeks, Take five or 10 minutes and sit down or wherever you are, if you're commuting to work, wherever you are, school, what have you, church, write down that one word. Then within a week or two, revisit all of those one words, challenge yourself. Maybe the next time you'll take that one of those one words and write an acrostic form or write a sentence. And then maybe the next time, the third time around, revisit those one words or that acrostic form or the sentence, write a paragraph. And before you know it, you will have developed a regular writing habit because the goal is even if you you want to get someone to tell their story you want to get them in the habit of writing right so mm -hmm. even after uh, uh <clears throat> we start the brainstorming process the goal is to get them to write words to get them to write sentences to get them to write paragraphs sometimes you know you you may even want to write a list writing list is is very helpful and is the key to even getting started uh, it could be a list of possible titles. Hmm. You know, I had done a uh, a six word memoir list and believe it or not, I lost it on a vehicle and never, it was never retrieved. So that's why everything that I write now, yeah, I never got it back. So some person was blessed with a whole bunch of great ideas and uh, <laughs> they might use them, who knows. But I write my name and my email address and everything, every, every book, every spiral notebook, every journal writing book, right? but also even phrases, uh, you know, phrases, sentences and paragraphs. So that's the first step in my uh, coaching process is we do what we call brainstorm. Then I talk to them about really telling them about, I share my, uh, my quick tips based on my 10 step method, you know, to telling your story, you wanna think about the title, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you wanna also think about um, what is your why? Why are you telling the story? Mm. And then who do you want to, who do you want to help? Who, who is your audience? It's our audience. Who's going to be the audience? Yeah. That's going to really be fully invested in your story to get, because that's your market and that's who you are, are aiming to target. That's your aim to target that audience. So as you're writing your book, you have to cater to that audience, right? So um, in storytelling, there are some basic things. Every, every story has a beginning, a middle, and an end, right? So how do we get there? Think of your title. Uh, think of your setting. Where does your, your story take place, right? And then characters. Who are your characters? You know you have to have a main character. Your main character is your protagonist. You know you have to have uh, uh, an opposing uh, character to the protagonist, which is your antagonist, right? And then uh, you have to think about um, the plot. You know, I'm telling you, your plot basically is what is your story about? That's what your plot is. And someone said, well, what is the plot of your story? That's basically telling them what your story is about. And usually mm -hmm. when, you, when you go to Amazon or whatever download uh, store uh, you're going to, to buy a book, what you're going to do is you're going to get a little summary of what this book is about, right. what this story is about. That's going to make someone buy your book. And uh, uh, whatever your uh, your uh story the the plot sequence um of events that takes place in your story you want to make sure that you uh that you follow 
the 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 components and the elements of of plotting so that's a whole nother process that i coach and i go through right but then also every story has some kind of narrative structure as i said the beginning the middle the uh, the end and you want to uh uh help them i try to help well i help my writers to uh to frame that structure um in their stories and then um your story you what is your story you mm-hmm. know understanding what the story is we know that a, a story right is an account of events or a series of related events or experience that someone has going through and um what kind of story you're writing you're writing a fiction story fiction stories a make-believe story are uh, you writing a non-fiction story a non-fiction story are true things that really really took place but one of the things that i think is key when you're writing a fiction story do your research mm. make sure the things that you're talking about if you're Actually, talking about if your your setting is where your story takes place right so if you're saying that your story is set in new york make sure you know all about new york city make sure you know where the empire state building is make sure you know what street it's on, on 34th street or you know wherever it's located make sure you know what grand central or times square is you can't just be shooting things out that really don't exist yes you can if it's a real make believe place but if it's a real place make sure you know you do your research and know um know the surroundings and the areas because i had to do that for a story that i'm still working on i went to grand central constantly because i studied this particular um it's a statue mm. it's a statue and then i found out who was the owner of the statue and i really need to go to barcelona to really really get these details i need to get on the metro north and take a ride on the metro north train so i can get some scenery so i can think about imagery and that type of thing as i'm sharing the details because there's a conversation a couple of conversations that takes place on the train so how can i tell the story more effective than putting myself in the place where i can get some of those real details right and then after that you'll have your first draft that's basically it in a, it in a nutshell but back to um plotting um there are five plot elements and this is what i teach my writers and you have to think about um exposition right um this is the beginning of your story and it actually introduces the main characters and the uh the protagonist and the antagonist in your story and the setting and um what their world looks like that's mm-hmm. what that does that's what happens in your exposition and then you got to think about your rising action and this is where if look listen every story has to have a conflict if there's no conflict guess what it's going to be a really really boring story mm-hmm. and i'm telling you if i get to the first chapter and i'm not you know there's nothing that's drawing me and i'm putting that book down i mean that's just the bottom line so every story has to have some kind of conflict you know as far as to to build up the intensity um as you uh, are climbing up this mountain right of intensity you know getting to the peak of your story right and that's how we get to what we call the climax you know mm-hmm. this is the moment in your story where um uh the peak of, of the tension takes place you know so this is uh this is probably uh is going to be the most interesting part of your story when you ever watch a movie you know and that climax oh man did you see that so and so part of whatever um right. you could even you can even the bottom line is knowing how to implement these uh these plot points is very important when you're thinking about um plotting your story and then you have to think about the falling action cuz now you got to bring it all together right that falling action is um like once um uh, your story after that climax ha- has taken place um and it's been amplified now how do we get to the resolve how do we get to the resolve how do we get to the resolution in the story and because every i believe that every story i i don't know about you but i don't like to read a story and i'm not satisfied as the reader the reader i want to know um what really happened like i'm mm. trying to solve whatever the issue is um uh, whatever um the protagonist is trying to overcome you know how did he overcome this problem how did he overcome uh this issue you know whatever or, or whatever the the topic uh is whatever the real action or or the real plot in the story is how is it going to end mm. uh, some some authors like what is it stephen king love him 
but he he has a lot of open ended endings. So it's like you have to figure it out. You know, but I think that's you, a good and, thing. And sometimes oh, yeah. that's good. Sometimes yeah. it's good yeah. because you can come back. You can you can come back with you know a sequel to that uh, whatever it was that story, or even you can go into a trilogy. And I mm -hmm. I think it's interesting um, when I don't like horror, but a lot of horror um, uh, authors do that. So you they leave you in suspense, and you got to kind of like say, oh man, I wonder what's happening. Or if you're watching Empire or one of those shows. And then they stop the series and you have to wait for the next series. Like, oh man, I wonder what's going to happen to Lucia's lines or, you know, or, or <laughs> Cookie, or, you know, whatever, whoever the uh -huh. characters are. So yeah, basically in your resolution, you want to tie up whatever those loose ends are. And then you have to think about your point of view. You know, we know there are uh, uh, different point of views. You know, you have a first person, um, you have your second person and you have your third person. And that's, that's basically it you know, just to get them started to getting to that first draft. And guess what? You can do it, whoever you are that's listening. You can tell your story. And guess what? I can help you to tell it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What I, I love the most about um, all that you were saying is the the process, you know, like actually doing the research and, you know, traveling a little bit and going, you know, like doing the actual work to make sure that even, it, even in... Yeah. Um, like fiction and creative writing, making sure that you're um, like, again, like you said, unless it's like a fantasy place where you came up with on your own, but making sure that what you're writing about is believable. That makes so much sense. Yes. And the, the process of actually doing that to go to these different places, you know, and then being inspired and then finding out things that you never know. One thing I, I um, when you were mentioning um, uh, the Metro North and the Grand Central Station, Anybody yes. who has ever gone there, the, I don't know what it was, but this one particular day, I was there one day, and I guess I had more time than I thought, and I happened to just look up, mm -hmm. and just like, anybody who goes to Grand Central Station, if you haven't already done so, yes. just look up, when you go inside, look up, and look at the artwork that's there. All of the astrological stuff that they have, astrology, yeah. the different stars and all, yeah, I noticed it's, that, I noticed I never noticed detail. that before i think i noticed that um yeah. i want to say was it last year either last year or the year before mm -hmm. but i just i was there um i don't forgot where i was going but whatever the case may be i was there <laughs> i was there and i happened to just look up and i'm like oh wow i've never noticed this and like this it's all over like this artwork all over yeah so that's Beautiful. great detail for anybody who may have wanted to you know what i'm saying just just because you use you know that as a um yes. as a point of reference that's something that you want yeah. like you want to go to these different places and if if you need if you can't go i mean it's great to be able to get there but if you can't at least yeah. do the research on it you know <laughs> look things up look for the pictures look for photos um you know yeah. like again like do the research and find out what's actually there so that you can make the you know make the scene more vivid because one thing that i love is a good writer who can make me be there I love exactly. a good story that and not, yes. it doesn't have to be fiction. I just love writing where I can see every, you know, where everything is so descriptive. Exactly. You know what I mean? Yes. I, yes. I love that. I'm, I, I enjoy reading. So even when it That's comes wonderful. to like, even when it comes to books where, you know, like, um, like textbooks or, um, you know, you know, books that are like self-help or books that are teaching you something. Yeah. I like to be able to, you know, and I'm, that's just who I am. Like when somebody says something or if I read something, I picture it. And so if it's, yes. if you, if you, you know, depict something in a certain way in your writing to where there's nothing left of the imagination. So you can actually see it there. I mean, sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's good to leave, a, you know, yeah. things open for, you know, the reader to yeah. be able to imagine um, whatever is, you know, missing, whatever details are missing. Yeah. But. I love a good description. I love good details. I absolutely love yes. that. Because I, I mean, yes. I, like I said, I like to see, I, I see it <laughs> as I read it. Especially so, the characters. You want to know, like, what do they look like, right? Right, right. And being able to describe the characters. I mean, I know when I'm reading a book, like, what does this person look like? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how do you, like, when it comes to, you know, as a still we're speaking of characters, like, how do you, like, how do you, find your characters or how do you create your characters? I'm, I have to tell you, honestly, I thank God for just giving me this uh, incredible imagination 
Mm -hmm. uh, to come up with these characters because sometimes when you're writing a book and you might, maybe you might come up with your protagonist, the main character, and you don't have your uh, antagonist yet. And um, as you're creating and building the world for this character, you come up with the conflict and you think of what kind of character would really, really um, bring this conflict, like be able to bring this conflict home in your story. And as you really hone in on um, imagery, mm -hmm. I think that's how you can come up with characters. But again, even like dreams, when I have dreams, I, sometimes I use my dreams to come up with characters. Like I have this story, it's called The Isolated Life of Leonard James. It's on Ken Vela right now. And I have to tell you, honestly, this has been one of those stories that I wrote the story when I was in college, but now that I'm doing it scene by scene, a lot of this stuff I'm creating as I go, God has given me ideas for these characters that I'm introducing. Like I just introduced a new character based mm. on a real person. In, this, in my real life. And I asked his permission. I said, can I write you into my story? And guess what? I wrote him into the story. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So that's how I, sometimes it's real people. And some, most of the time it's fake people, make believe people. Yeah. That reminds me of, um, oh my God, how did I forget? The, uh, the Best Man, the movie of The Best Man. When um, Harper K. Diggs, his yes. character Harper, what he, well, basically, mm -hmm. <laughs> what he said that he did. <laughs> was like what he said mm -hmm. that he did because he basically lied but the what he did what he said um what he told robin that he did um is that he took you know different mm -hmm. people different characters from you know his experience in college and formed characters out of them mm -hmm. you know what i mean not like it's not this specific person yeah. it's not this specific person but took different characters and kind of merged them in a, in, in a sense which is not what he did he yeah. lied straight up lied <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> he kind of like flip things around but even yeah. in doing things like that that's yeah. actually such a you know you can get your inspiration from people you know like you said and just from watching people yeah um it's so funny because my co <laughs> i'm actually well I, i'm not gonna say that but um at least not yet i'll reveal that stuff later um but my cousin okay um some stuff i'm working on but my cousin was um was telling me once that um Carleen shout out to Carleen if she's if she's watching um because she's a writer okay. she's an amazing writer as well and one thing that she says is that like and I've experienced this as well like the characters they you know they come to mind and you kind of like take on their persona in a way and you yes. see them and yes. you hear their voices and it's yes. like and you be it, it's kind of like you can see them in action you know before you and I've yes. actually experienced that before and I'm like man <laughs> Imagine being in you this know, person's shoes. Yes, character character development is a course in itself. And mm. I was with my writing coach yesterday. I had a session with my writing coach, Monique Lisa, and we talked about character development. And so we're going to be having this character development uh, workshop. So anybody who really, really wants to focus on character development, she has this course. It's called Extreme Killer. I took this course myself. And I'm telling you, it wasn't until I took this course and I really, really focused in on creating these amazing 3D characters. I've been mm. writing more than I've ever written in my life. So I'm going to recommend that anybody, if uh, I wish that I had the link that I could share, but after this, I'm going to ask her to go on this live and yeah, share that link to her stream uh, killer. Yeah, um, of course, I took it. And I'm telling you, um, there she has a lot of mini courses, but character development is very, very important because I think that the more you learn to develop your characters, the more you make them likable um, to the reader, whether if they are a protagonist or an anta antagonist, guess what? Every time you, uh, you see a movie, a Medea movie, everybody loves Medea. Everybody like, loves I Medea. I mean, I'm, yeah. And I'm, I'm, imagine there's a, a character, like I love Snoopy in Peanuts. Um, I love Snoopy and I love um, Woodstock. Oh, and I'm like, it's... Snoopy just really, uh, he touches my heart, but he's <laughs> such a lovable and likable character. Listen, he does some crazy things too. Yes, he does. You know, <laughs> he, he, like, but this is Charlie Brown's dog. This is his dog. And it's like, I love him. I love everything about how 
um, this character Snoopy came about and why I love him and all the different elements of this particular character, even mm-hmm. today. I love Snoopy. And that's a dog. As you, and as a dog, <laughs> right. And the that's most cartoon, intelligent yeah, cartoon, dog yeah. that you have, have yeah. ever run into. Like, Snoopy is always yes. up to something. It's just it's cool to see him engaged with the rest of the characters. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. So um, we are almost done. I just want to ask you one more question. Well, two more, really. Actually, yeah. Um, what is like a routine that you have, like when it's, you know, when you, when you're, when you're kind of like focusing on what you want to write. So do you have like a specific routine that you do before you start writing? Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you a cup of coffee. I definitely have to have a cup of coffee. That's like my comfort. It's something about a cup of coffee, sometimes a cup of tea, but most of the times a cup of coffee. I am also a person that goes to the library. Like as soon as we're done, I have an appointment. I have to go to the library. Um, sometimes I tutor people in the library, but I love the library. And if I could have a room in the library with my name on it and it's mine, nice. everyone knows I love the library. That's like my favorite place. So my routine is to kind of go to the library, kind of get a private, you know, private room. And sometimes I'll ask, can I have a private room? And I just go there and think. Sometimes I don't write anything but one word. But I'm going to also share this with you because I'm talking about this in another project. Even if you have a blank page, guess what, everybody? There is power in a blank page. Oh, my goodness. And I just break it down. I'm telling you. Yes, there's power in a blank page, too. How? So even, I, I if you can't it. come up with one word, God gave me. Listen, I can't share. Listen, I can't share it on here because I need y'all to buy, to buy, to buy my next book. And I'm sharing ah. it there. So that's something that I'm working on. God just gave me this amazing idea. It's almost like a, a canvas, an artist that's drawing on this canvas. And right now there's nothing there, but mm. all you have is your imagination, right? And in your imagination, then you begin to jot it down either on a page, on your, your canvas, if you're, you're doing art or whatever it is. Words are art. That's why they call them the magic of words. Words is an art form, right? Wordsmiths, they are called wordsmiths because they, it's like they make this amazing, incredible um, melody with words. And as you're getting people to read these words and you're forming this amazing, it's almost like you have sopranos, alto, tennis, and all the various parts. You you have an eight part uh, chorus mm-hmm. and everybody is singing to this amazing melody. It's not a cacophony when you have this orchestra and everybody's in tune and uh, uh, everybody is playing on the right key and what have you, you have perfect harmony. And Mm. that's what the magic of words do. Okay, so we have- It's like a song, your favorite song, your favorite song. Think Mm. about it. I think it's amazing that a writer can write a whole story in one song. No, really. Because that. that's really what music yeah. is. That's really what, what, <laughs> yeah. what music is. It's a story. It's a story. Yes. More more yeah. often than not, um, yeah, I guess I can say that. More often than not, it's a story of something that somebody has either gone through or yes. something that they've imagined. Someone they know. Yeah, right? or, or someone, someone they know. They know. So yeah. Kelly, I am going to answer your question because she did just answer because um, she asked, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming she's talking about how there's power in the blank page. She's not going to answer that right now because she has a book <laughs> that will explain all of that. So we're just going to have to get the book <laughs> in order to find the answer to that because I'm interested as well. <laughs> I need to know. Okay. I need to yes. know. So <laughs> okay. before, before we go, because we only have a few minutes left, first of all, um, well, let me ask you this first. What is next for you? Like, what yes. do you have coming up? Coming up, mm-hmm. uh, my writing course, my writing course. So that's something that's in the works. And I'll be uh, sharing um, the link probably in a couple of weeks for the pre-sale of my writing course. Um, I have a writing course that's coming out. And I also have, it's going to be like a mini series. It's going to be like three in one Um And then I'll have a bundle that I'm going to sell as well, Um, as well as I'm going to introduce what I call the journaling life. 
and it's going to be my entire process, but it's going to be in the form of a course. So thank you guys. I love you. I just want to say I love everybody. Thank everyone who has purchased my book. Thank everyone who has followed me uh, on, on social media, on Facebook, on uh, Twitter, on Instagram, on Clubhouse. Oh my goodness. And thank you for, to all of my clients, my mentors, and just everybody. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so glad. <laughs> so let me ask you really quick. So the book that you're referring to that has the answer, is that already out or are you still working on it? It's, it's, I'm still working on it. Okay. God just gave this idea to me like literally two weeks ago. Yes. There is power in a blank page. Woo! I can't wait to share it with y'all. So do well, it's it's fresh, so you don't have any TA just yes. yet. Do, do you have a target date that you not a target date, but like or a little ballpark figure around when you would like well, for let me to let me just say that I, this is let me just share this with you. Everything that I write and everything that I produce is on purpose. Mm. I believe that God has put it in my heart that every time I publish a book, my first book, I published it on September 11th, positive thinking will make you happy. I wow. have a dream and I have a vision that one day there will be billboards all over the world that says positive thinking will make you happy. Philippians 4, 8. Mm. I didn't make any money off of positive thinking will make you happy initially because my very first book signing was supposed to be March the 22nd of 2020. And we all know that we had a shutdown, right? right. So the Holy Spirit began to reveal to me that, Linda, it's not so much about the money more than it is about the message. So September 11th, that was the day that my late nephew, Chase McGee, uh, was actually born. He was born after the first tower fell. So I wanted to really, I dedicated the book to Chase. And that's the day that I actually published it. I can't remember if it was a 15 year anniversary for September 11th, whatever. I think it was, it was an anniversary date. And I also dedicated to Uh oh, she went out, but as she is, I'm sure she'll be back in a second. What I would like for everybody to do, I'm going to put her information here so that you can follow her so that you can, cause she gave us such awesome, awesome information. So I would like for everyone that is here to follow her on Instagram, follow her on Facebook, um, drop her something to her cash app. Because again, she did give us some really, really good information. And then remember, like we said, that she does still have books available on Amazon. So like she has 14 of them, y'all. <laughs> 14 <laughs> of them. So if you look up um, the one the one that she said um, called Positive Thinking Will Make You Happy, I actually have that. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to reveal anything about it. I'm just going to let y'all, yes, that one, I have that one. And um, you guys- It's a said, journal um, book. Yes. Okay, so you can you said it. I wasn't gonna say it. So it's a real no. It's a real time journal book. It's it's the book. It's the journal that I did in my last semester of graduate school, and it's real time, like from day one to day forty. And I just show everybody what I was writing in my journal. Yeah, that's what it is. And I think oh, yeah. you're gonna love it. I think it's gonna inspire you. I I I believe so as well. I mean, it did for me. It definitely did for me. Yeah, thank so you. So I would, I'm going to say this, write in pencil because there's ways, there's um, different lines and things for you to write down your notes and your thoughts and stuff. Write in yeah. pencil because you never know, like you want to come back to it. You know what I mean? And like, I don't know, maybe take a picture of it and then erase it or get another <laughs> book. Why not? <laughs> get another yeah. book. I write All everything right, in so, pen. So yeah, I'll get another book. That's what I would There do. you go. <laughs> Buy another book. Do that. Do that instead. <laughs> So, um, Linda, it was so really, it was really good to have you here again. And before Absolutely. we go again, like I said, everybody, her information is on here so that you can follow her. I would like to you for you to leave the audience with some words of encouragement, just, um, basically to the, to the audience of those who are interested in writing. Yes, I will say that I am a, a strong believer. As I said, we all have that story that we are afraid to tell. And I want to say, whatever idea comes to your head, regardless of what it is, you might think it's, it's insignificant or it's a stupid idea. No idea is stupid. Write it down. But I also believe that, like my mentors and those who helped me along the way, Reverend Dr. Benjamin Chavis Jr., um, Dr. Teneria Drummond-Smith, uh, Monique Lisa, 
Johnson and her husband, Delano A. Johnson of uh, Refuse to Be Talented and Broke, I'm going to say to you, if some of us will help one of us, one of us can help all of us. And I also want to just say that um, Bishop T.J. Williams, he gave me a platform called Hard Truth. And now I bring people together and we talk about people who live with disabilities, with the uh, concentration on autism. Um, even though I don't have a personal connection, I've been able to connect with people who do. And I'm gonna tell you something. I believe that um, everything that I do, it aligns with my mission and my brand for positive thinking will make you happy because I believe that a positive attitude will get you through anything you're going through. So whatever you're writing, whatever you aspire to write, write it down. And always remember Philippians 4, 8. Remember that. So yeah, that's what I want to leave y'all with. God bless you all. Awesome. Again, thank you so much for joining us. Um, to all of our viewers, thank you guys for so much so for joining us. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for your questions. Um, remember to share this with somebody, especially somebody that you are, you know, first of all, avid readers and those who just may have a story because everybody has somebody that they've told once or once or twice or sometimes, you know what, you should write about this. So this is something that That's they right. can do to get them started. And then as we said, if they're not sure how to go about it, Linda does have a course that she has um, so that that can, you know, can help get them started. All right, guys, I am so glad that you were able to join us. This has been another episode of Speaking Plain English. Until next time.